Once again, we're at Chef's store. They were having a sale on frozen macaroni and cheese. We decided to get a couple of cases of them. These are some of the macaroni and cheeses that we got at Chef's store. So I'm going to get these pre-cooked and then we'll dish them up into portions for freeze drying. So this is the way they come. They're four and three quarters pounds a piece. They come in pans like this and you're supposed to open them up and and puff up the lid so that it's not squishing against the mac and cheese. And I can warm this up just a little bit and scrape it off and get it into there, into the pan. And then bubble this up so that it uh, won't stick to the mac and cheese. And I can cook two or three of these at a time in the oven, get them all stirred up, get them completely cooked, and then I'll pan them up. All right, so with the lid puffed up, I'll put that on a baking sheet and get that in the oven. And then do the next one. That one will go in the oven also. As soon as they're halfway done, they get stirred and put back in. All right, so it's still some ice in the middle. So I'll kind of stir it around and it's still very liquidy until it gets all the way up to temperature. So the type of thickener in here needs uh, to get hot first. And of course the macaroni will absorb some more of the moisture. So we'll get these stirred and back in there. Get that back in there. Probably needs another 20 minutes and we'll get the other pan mixed and back in. Get that one back in and then we'll get the other one out and stir it. Okay, so that still needs some more time, so get that recovered. So check the temperature, it's only about 147. It still needs more because it needs to be over 165 and I like to have it even hotter. And then we'll let it cool. Stab and check method. Just stab it in there fast. It doesn't collapse the foil. Now it's up to temperature. Okay, that is toasty now. Open those up, stir them around, let them cool for a while, and then we can get them into the pans for pre-freezing. Start with some pans without dividers. And Put just a touch of the non-stick cooking spray in them to help them come out easier afterwards. And zero out the scale. I'm gonna go with one pound of mac and cheese. Level that out, and then that ready for pre-freezing. This time, mac and cheese. So see, these are some of the mac and cheese that we did earlier from Chef's store. I'm going to get them onto pans. The pans were in the freezer for a while to help chill them. And we'll get those started. These are the ones that have already been popped out of the pans. We have some that have not yet. And with these, they're ready to just go right on the trays. Then we have some that we haven't popped out yet and these are the half pan ones so we can just kind of push out on the corner or edges and then i can push up from the bottom and that releases it enough to pull them out of there usually all right Tray one, 1882 for the gross weight. And then if I subtract that 753, 754 at the beginning, that gives me how much 
macaroni and cheese was on there. And each one of these was a one pound when I put it in there, as you, you saw before, and then half pounds. So tray one, over. Tray two. There we go, 1879. Tray three. And another half one. And usually these would all be in uh, zipper bags like the big ones were. Just hadn't gotten around to it yet. 1865. And they will have lost a little bit just while they were freezing. 1877 for that one. Now, let's get some thermometers in these things. I'm going to double check that one. 1875. It was lying to me because it gets so cold. When it gets really cold, when I put really cold things on there, it seems to have changed the weight slightly. Now, we'll quickly get thermometers in these. All it needs is about an inch. Yeah. All right, over to the freeze dryer and let's get these in. So we've got 10 pounds of mac and cheese ready to go in the freeze dryer. So let's get them in there right away. So hopefully we can see that there's little bands of ice inside on the barrel. The freeze dryer hasn't been turned off since the last batch, which was my sister's bags of tea. So it's really cold already. Uh, so all the time we were bagging her tea and getting these ready, it was running. It's more than 40 below zero already right now. So I can put these in here and it won't take long before it's ready to start the main dry cycle. So let's get them in and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the machine and how to, I'm going to make this one go. So let's get these on there. Starting at the bottom with tray four. And these trays right now are about 10 degrees. So nice and cold already. And because the seal is so cold, it's also not as flexible. Uh, I want to really make sure I've got a good seal ring around there. I'm going to use my uh, cake frosting knife and just kind of uh, twist it in that groove in back of the seal so between the back of the seal and the front of the machine and it's cold in there it's not wanting to move okay i think i've got it so i'll double check it I've got a good seal ring around there right now we shouldn't have to worry about air getting in here and the moisture from the air freezing along that seal ring. If it freezes there, it will still seal when the machine starts vacuuming, but if it's been freezing long enough and it has an ice ring around there, it kind of has to pull enough air in there to melt before it can get back down to the seal and, and, and seal against it. It still works, but it does pull in a bit of air. And I don't want anything in there. All right. Now, let's get that set for running. So this is the end of the previous batch. It's still been running all that time. Uh, it's racked up another hour or so. I'm going to stop it with no defrost. And then I'm going to press customize. Start custom. And continue. Okay, and it's not going to need that much time. I'm going to shorten it another hour. And that's probably more than it needs to, but I'll leave it at that. So with those in there, it'll be about two days, and it's late in the evening. Uh, so it'll be two days from now when I take them back out. We'll be back then, so don't go away. We'll be right back. And before it gets ready to start, I'm going to go ahead and turn the cooling fan on the side of the vacuum pump to help keep it cool. The freeze dryer finished just a few minutes ago. I gave it three more hours last night so that I would be down here when it finished and I almost made it. But they've dropped down to about 70 degrees now. 
I'm gonna get them out real quick, weigh them and get them back in for two more hours uh, for the dry check. They haven't cooled enough that it's going to cause a problem with uh, condensation on them, but it's getting close. So I wanna get them out real quick. Open the drain valve. and let that scorching hot air come in. All right, so the top one says 70 degrees, just about 80 degrees, 80 degrees, 70 degrees. So let's get them out. So tray one. So 1126, and it's dropping to 25, so I'm gonna put 1126 with a minus sign. So I'll know that it was actually just on the verge of going down to the next number. Okay, tray two, 1119. Okay, I'm gonna put tray two up on top. Tray one down here. Now tray three. Okay, and you can see how much they've shrunk. Uh, they were tight together and from edge to edge. Lots of things shrink a little bit like this, um, and a few things expand. Marshmallows expand a little, most candies expand a little, but most other foods shrink a little. So I, don't, I never, never check the percentage. Uh, what's that, maybe 10%? Okay, 1120. And tray four. Tray four's tray is cold already, because being down at the bottom. 1116. And that's where you'd use the rewarm trays function if yours have it. And mine just give it more dry time to reheat. Okay, I'll put tray four up here. And this tray is cold to the touch. I wouldn't even consider bagging this, even if I knew it was done because of how cold it is, I'd be concerned with condensation uh, on the tray and getting on the food. And, and tray three down here. And on the newer machines, I believe it has a warm tray function. This one, um, I have more dry time and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to give it more dry time. I just closed it, that's good continue and this will tell me okay so it had finished almost 27 minutes ago uh, that's too long for me to leave it sit in there and still take it out without rewarming I can get away with about 10 or 15 minutes but by 30 minutes it's starting to get too cold on some of the trays so now I'll continue it and give it another 15 minutes so we'll be back in about two hours to check this. If they didn't lose weight, huh. if they don't lose weight in the next two hours, then they're dry now and we'll be able to bag them. If they lose weight during this next two hours, that means they weren't dry right now and we'll give them more time, two hours at a time until they stop losing weight or more depending on if I have to go do something, then I might give it three, four or five hours if I know I'm not going to be back. Until I come back, don't go away, I'll be right back. It'll just be a minute. It's a bunch of hours later. It's like five hours later because I got busy doing other stuff. So I just added more time to this so it just kept going. Now let's get them out, check them, and see if they were dry all those hours ago. If they didn't lose any weight during any of that time, they were dry a long time ago. We'll find out now. I'm going to bypass the rest of that. And then open the drain valve. Okay, as soon as enough air is in, we can get it open. Tray one. Okay. And it looks like no change so uh, might be a small fraction because now it's before it was at 11:26 and going bouncing down now it looks like it's 11:25 and bouncing up 
So tray two, 11, 19, so no change. So these were dry hours and hours ago. So they were dry before I started doing this test. 11, 20. And 11.15. Get this turned off first. Ah, turned that off using the no defrost button. If I'd been prepared to check it, they could have come out five hours ago. I wasn't, so they couldn't. But I can use that time for how long did it take. It would have been about 37 and a half hours. Now, we'll come back, write down the times and the power usage, and then go get these bagged. So the timer here is showing 42 hours and 40 minutes, but we know that the last part of that would have been unnecessary because after testing it, it didn't lose any more weight. So we know that we can put down the earlier time, which would have been about 37 and a half hours. So that's the time I'll use is the 37 and a half. So the power usage for that was 28.61 kilowatt hours. And again, it would have been five hours earlier, uh, so that could have been as much as two kilowatt hours. And we'll get it reset and set for the next batch. Okay, now we'll go get them bagged. We'll get my little defrost baffle in place and put the fan in place. Get that going in just a second. And there's a pretty fair amount of ice underneath. And I find sometimes when it's that high, we'll end up getting a little bit of water come out. So one of the things I can do to prevent that is just put this piece of angle aluminum there and that will melt a little groove into the ice pretty quickly. And then the water will end up going that way. And then I don't have it come out at all. Now bagging. So here's our 10 pounds of macaroni and cheese and you can see the amount that they shrank because it was completely full. So it shrank uh, about half inch, three quarters of an inch each direction on the blocks. We'll get the thermometers out and get them weighed and then bag them. got all the information now. We've got the, got the net weight before it was freeze dried. We've got the weight after it was freeze dried and subtract the two and we get the weight uh, of the water that was lost. With that, we've got some bags. I'm going to put single half blocks in the little pint bag and then the bigger block or two of the blocks into the bigger bag. And I've got it labeled with the batch number Plus on the label it has the batch number and then what it is, the date that it went into the freeze dryer, the amount it was before freeze drying and the water that's needed. So then this will be ready for a small lunch snack of about one cup. Okay, we'll get these bagged away now. I'm gonna start with these bigger blocks and they're still warm out of the freeze dryer. And I'm putting them in here just so I can kind of crumbling them up a small amount because I don't want to crush it. Of course, I don't want to break the macaroni pieces. I just want to loosen the cheese bonds so that I can pour it into the bags. So it doesn't take a lot of crushing to take care of it. And then I'll pour it into the quart bag. So there's one of the one pound blocks in one of the quart bags. So we'll get these bagged away and then move on to the oxygen absorbers. And then these will go a little half block in each of these littler bags. So the macaroni pieces seem to be very strong. They're not breaking even when I give it a good crush. So that's great. The cheese sauce portion is breaking apart and the rest of it's staying together. 
Those are all bagged now. Before I add the oxygen absorbers to these, I'm going to add a bit of uh, the instant clear gel. So I'm going to add just one teaspoon to the little bags and two teaspoons for the bigger bags. I'm not 100% sure I need extra thickening, but the original cheese sauce on this had not been thickened until it got cooked. I'm afraid that once I re... Uh, that it's been frozen again and then freeze-dried and then rehydrated, that the sauce is going to be too thin. So I'm just going to add a small amount of this and then we'll do a test on one of these bigger bags later. So just going to add one teaspoon to each of these bags and then I can, hopefully just during storage alone it'll get mixed up enough. Usually I would add it while I'm putting it into the Ziploc or while I'm crushing it up in the Ziploc. And I should have done that here too. But I can kind of shake them around. And then these I'll do two teaspoons. Now I'll add the oxygen absorbers and close them up. Once again, I'm using the 300 cc oxygen absorbers. Oh, well, that's got one. Okay. Yeehaw! So that one, I ended up with the oxygen absorber partway in the zipper. And that's why I try to get them down alongside the food. Okay. And then give them a little bit of a shake to help distribute the instant clear gel. Yeah, so a little bit of a shake kind of stirs that around, coats the pieces, and that's all it'll need. Now we'll get these closed also. So now I'm going to seal the bags up at the top, real high on the bag. So make sure that it's, I'm going to swing that out of the way for a second. And you can see it's time for me to uh, put new pieces on there. That's starting to burn through and I should have done it a while ago. I'll do that soon. I've got a nice seal across the top and it's ready to store as soon as I add a gross weight to the bag. Finally, I'm going to add a gross weight to every bag, so 97 grams. So that bag weighs 97 grams right now, and if it's bouncing between two numbers, I'll pick the higher number, so 98 grams. Now if that bag starts to weigh more, I'll know that water or moisture is getting into this bag right through the plastic, because all of these bags are permeable. 96 grams. They are permeable to oxygen and to moisture. It's just a matter of how much. So over some period of time moisture is going to get through that bag. It doesn't matter what you do. If you just have this bag sitting on a shelf and it's in a humid area, moisture is going to go through there eventually. So you just pick the best bag you can, so that will happen the slowest it possibly can. With those marked with the gross weights, they can go into a bin now. Let's go find the, where they're going to go. Batch 580 is done now. We've got them bagged in pint and quart bags and they're ready to go into a bin. I'm going to add it to one of the bins from the first 500 pound series or the first 50 batch series. There was still a bit more room in a few of the bins. Bin 2 looks like maybe I can get this whole uh, batch in there and if not we'll put it in one of the other bins. I think there's room for at least two more batches distributed throughout the bins. So we'll get whatever we can fit into this bin and then if we need space for uh, we'll put some in another bin. And I will be saving one of these out uh, to rehydrate to do another test with that. So you'll see that at the end of the video. Let's see how many of the bags of macaroni and cheese will fit into this bin. I'm going to start with the bigger bags, the quart bags, and I think they're going to fit pretty well. 
So I want to make sure that I leave about an inch of space along the top so the lid will fit on. And then the little pint bags. Let's see if I can get those in there. It looks like they're all going to fit. Oh, and I wanted to save one of the quart bags out for a rehydration test later. So I'll mark that off on the list right now so that it doesn't end up in the inventory. So it looks like they're all in there and that they're low enough. We'll check with the lid. And I can feel that they're just barely touching under there, but they're not being crushed. So that bin is full and I don't need any more in there. So next, on to the next batch, number 581. Uh, which will be another batch of macaroni and cheese as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted. So don't go away. We'll be right back in the next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're going to rehydrate one of the packs of Molly's Kitchen macaroni and cheese. This is from batch 580 which went into the freeze dryer on October 2nd. On this video, it just happened. For me, it's three months ago, or a little more than three months ago. So we're gonna test it out. Anyway, I've got 300 milliliters of water. This lost about 305 grams. And since I usually use a scale, I don't necessarily have a, a milliliter measuring cup. Uh, though this does, so this is about 300 milliliters of water, which is what was removed. <sighs> These are good bags. <laughs> At least they're hard for me to tear. We'll get it stirred up in here and then we'll cover it with some plastic wrap and then let it set for a while. Okay, the oxygen absorber. And this way it also added some instant clear gel to it, I believe. And of course, you could rehydrate it directly in the Mylar bag, but it doesn't show up on camera as well. And that's going to take a while, and I'll probably have to stir it a few times. May have to microwave it a bit too, because all this light stuff is kind of floating on top. So I'll get that covered, give it about 10 minutes, check it, stir it, and see if it needs any microwaving because that's going to cool it down quite a bit. Hey, okay. we'll come back and check it in about 10 minutes, see how it's doing. It's only been 10 minutes, but we're going to go ahead and check it. I'm going to assume it's going to need more time and maybe some microwaving. Yeah, the pasta is not rehydrated yet, but the sauce is thickening nicely already. So that amount of thickener and that type of sauce is a good combination. This looks really good, but the pastas are not ready yet. And to be fair too, uh, these pastas, these macaronis, are a very thick walled macaroni. Not like some of them they would use typically in freeze drying and rehydrating. If you use very short pieces and thin wall, of course they rehydrate better and quicker. But I would rather wait and have <laughs> heavier pastas, bigger vegetables and meats in my stews. I would just rather have bigger pieces and have to wait a little while longer. I'm not usually in such a hurry. And I could always eat it this way. It's just <laughs> crunchy still. Yeah, very chewy still. But it is edible already. Okay, I'm going to microwave that for a little bit. Because that's only just warm now. I mean, this, this big container... Uh, loses a lot of heat. So I'll microwave this and then we'll come back in another um, 10 or 15 minutes and see how it's doing. So I've given it 15 more minutes after microwaving it for just a little bit of time. That's really good. It reminds me of maybe Kentucky Fried Chicken mac and cheese. Nice and saucy. I like it. And they feel softer now. Let's give it a try. 
Oh, that looks, that, that's good. They're a little bit firm. Oh, that's just the way I like it. That's perfect. So that took 25 minutes and some extra heat. That could be a problem when camping, but I would rather have to heat it extra and have the thick noodles or the thick uh, macaronis than have wimpy little pieces. That's good. Well, wow. I'm happy with that. Another thing that would be good on this would be bacon bits. Of course, you can never go wrong with bacon bits. Mm. Okay, so total rehydration time on this was 25 minutes, but I did microwave it on uh, defrost power setting, 30% power setting for two minutes in the middle of that. Mm -hmm -hmm. A little bit of bacon bits, bacon crumbles from Costco. Wow. Oh, oh, I should add bacon bits into some of them before I freeze dry them. I'm going to. That is excellent. The macaroni and cheese is good. It's good and saucy. It's not runny or watery. It's a good thick sauce. Wow. So this macaroni and cheese, I don't know how it is long term because I've only had it for three months, but that is excellent. Excellent. I would definitely do more of that. The macaroni and cheese is good. I would definitely do the macaroni and cheese again, which is good because I think I freeze dried 30 pounds of it already. And I will probably do more if it comes on sale again. It's a decent price and it's a really good mac and cheese. Um, yeah, I can recommend this stuff. This is pretty decent. Some people don't like store-bought macaroni and cheese and I don't mind at all uh, because I'm too lazy to make homemade macaroni and cheese. I'm real happy with this. Uh, it took about 25 minutes to rehydrate which isn't too bad and you could do all kinds of things with it too like we could have put this in a pan put it in the oven under the broiler and toast the top too or even add some more cheese on top and toast that or breadcrumbs. I mean you could do all kinds of things with that. Anyway it's very good. It worked out well. Doing another batch of macaroni and cheese. So tray one. And with this, I'm going to try this little piece of, uh, I've got a piece of stainless steel rod in there. That's about the same diameter as the thermometer. So testing that to see if I can just pull that out. Then I added a piece of plastic under it so that this end doesn't sink and we'll see what happens. But I forgot to, I was going to um, spray the rod with non-stick cooking spray and I forgot. So now I don't know if it's stuck in there. Get this popped out of there. So I'll just kind of push the edges out. And we'll see. Yeah, so if I'd remembered to um, spray that with some non-stick cooking spray, that might have helped a lot. Take it off the scale for a minute so I don't damage that. Okay, that's pretty stuck. That works. And then I have another one of the whole ones with another thermometer in. So get that popped out. Yeah, so I need to make sure I grease that. Okay, so the concept is good, but I need to do a better job of making sure I prepare it well. So I'm thinking that if I remember to spray that with cooking spray, it's gonna pop out better. And then I can slide the thermometer in. So I definitely like that. That works very well. So I've got 10 pounds of the macaroni and cheese ready to go in. I've got thermometers in only two of them. I'm not going to bother with the other two right now because I'd have to drill them. Um, and two will tell me the information that I'm after, 
which is, is the food in the freeze dryer cold? Especially since they're all the same food, so it should be plenty good. It's pretty easy to see how much they shrink. About three quarters of an inch on the sides. That's pretty cool. We'll get the final weights on these and then get them bagged. Finally, I've got them all bagged in one quart bags. Uh, they're the seven mil Mylar bags with the gusseted bottoms, which I can't show well until I seal them. I'm going to add 300 cc oxygen absorbers into each one and then we'll heat seal them. So with this batch of macaroni and cheese bagged in one quart bags, we'll get them in a bin and we have at least some room in batch six from the 50 batch series. So we'll put what we can in this and if we need to use another bin of that series, we'll put that in there. And I've got a little bit of room on this end, so we'll see what we can get in there. Okay, they're touching the lid, but it doesn't feel like it's pushing up on the lid. I can push down on it comfortably. So I'll leave that and I'll put the other two in a different bin. So as soon as the machine is defrosted, uh, we'll be ready for the next batch of macaroni and cheese. So until the next batch, uh, thanks for watching and come back for the next one. Thanks. Now batch 582 doing a third batch of the macaroni and cheese. This will give us 30 pounds of stored macaroni and cheese. So now on with getting this macaroni and cheese on the trays. So this will go back in the freezer for another time. 10 pounds of mac and cheese is ready to go in. With these that'll give us 30 pounds and we still have three full pounds left to freeze dry. We'll see you in two days. With those done, I'll move them over to the bagging area. So before these were freeze dried, we know that these were one pound blocks and these were half pound. So I'll take two of the half pound ones and put them together and put them in a bag and have the one pound blocks in a bag. And you certainly could uh, bag two or three pounds in a bag if you know that you're going to want some bigger meals of them. So we've got it labeled, each bag labeled with the batch number and then the little tag labeled with the batch number, what it is, the date that it went into the freeze dryer, the amount it weighed before it was freeze dried, and then I'll mark down the water needed by calculating the water loss and simply divide by 10, because uh, I had 10 pounds and I'm gonna be putting one pound in each bag. And then uh, uh, very small instructions of adding boiling water, the amount that's needed, uh, mix, wait 15 minutes, mix it again, eat it. It may have to adjust according to each one, but that's true with all freeze-dried food that you buy, um, like commercially made ones. With those all bagged in the one quart bags, I'll add the 300 cc oxygen absorbers. going to weigh each bag and write the weight on the bag. I'm going to put the 10 bags with the macaroni and cheese from batch 582 in bin 15 front. And we have decided already that we are going to be relabeling these bins. Uh, we have 40 bins here. We have 20 front and 20 back because it's two bins deep. We're going to relabel them with just one through 40 because it makes more sense. It's easier to add a next set. Uh, for one thing, it doesn't really matter that they're part of this same array. So if we have a third shelf or, or another set of shelves in a different part of the, the room, it will still be easy and make sense as far as finding them. Anyway, these will go into 15 front and we'll have those labeled. And then when we get finally get to it, We'll be relabeling all the front ones, probably just one through 20, and the back ones, uh, 21 through 40. And we'll just update the database because it's really easy to do in a database system. Okay, 
So this bin, and I'd mentioned that on an earlier one, the ones with the little tag of tape on them is just to tell me that I have some room in that bin. That way I don't have to look at the data sheet and find out which bin has what. Um, and I can just add that to the database on the computer later. So here's, here's the little 15 front bin. And the last thing we'd put in there is some of the cooked shrimp meat. Now we'll add the mac and cheese. Oops, almost forgot one of them. Now it's still room for at least uh, probably six or eight bin, uh, more bags. That's it for this batch. Uh, as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted, we'll be looking for another batch to put in there. The bottom line is, whoa, that was close. <laughs> I looked at the camera and the uh, pan wasn't lined up nice, so I went to grab it. That would probably leave another mark. <laughs>